Here's a little update on the Iltis here. Well, the Iltis is Iltis I, Iltisithithith. Stick around. So the Iltis is sold. I sold it for him yesterday. He had cash in his hand within 10 hours of it being advertised. I advertised it on um, Kijiji, which is like Gumtree. Uh, and he got a big total of $850. Now, that's not a great deal of money for a, a car, but it is for one of these because it is a project and sadly, uh, Mark's lifestyle doesn't fit in with having a vehicle like this. And I'm not dictating to him you shouldn't have it, I'm just trying to make him aware that this is going to be a money pit. And I sort of became aware that he mechanically wasn't, it was okay, got some ideas and things like this, but he wanted to weld it up. Well, the white one, he wanted to weld them up. And he arrived with some sheet steel that was just like Baco foil. And I said, well, you told me you were a welder. Now, you told me, you told me that you could weld. And you're going to weld it with that? You might as well just leave it as it is. So anyway, as my thoughts went a little bit awry. And quite frankly, when he put them here, the, the deal was he helps me out and I help him out. It's a great deal. No money to change his hands. He helps me, I help him. Great. But I said, they've got to be gone before the, first, uh, the end of October. Because I park sort of dead vehicles here because I need access to put my wood pellets between the containers which is very important to me and where we are behind me over here this is where my snow, snow, snow plough man puts all his snow so these would be actually covered see so I need the space so the other day when he turned up and he hadn't been here since like he, he brought these cars in Oh, when would it be? February, about February, March. Well, it must have been March he brought them down. And that was the deal. You know, you built me out, I built me out. And he never turned up until the other day. <laughs> so, I don't, I don't know what to say. Mark's lifestyle is different to ours. He wants to... He, 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 he works in a stable for free. Not like Jesus, but he works in a f stable for free. For free accommodation, should I say. And that's his thing. He's got a bicycle, he hasn't got a car. So he has very, very little money. And getting involved in something like this, I tried to tell him, just mark it, it it's going to be way over your head. Just a set of tyres for this, 616s, where are you going to get them from? You know, in, in decent condition. They're not very popular. And again, this is 1985. Uh, so the, the story about it was that uh, I told him that he had to get rid of them before October, the end of October. So he came down and he started to tinker on, on the white one. And I think then he realised that this was a big mistake because we lifted it up and underneath it there was no rear differential, no rear drive shafts. And there was no prop shaft. And there was no re <laughs> rear brakes. So it wasn't worth it. And also the white one had been robbed of a lot of engine parts and pieces like that. So that's why we ended up cutting it up. Why? Because when we take it to the scrapyard, uh, we have to cut it into pieces to get it off my truck because they won't help you. They won't come with a magnet and take it off. They just, you have to manhandle it himself. So we cut it into smaller pieces. And like I say, I got 50 bucks for it, 56 bucks or something like that. So when I finished the video, do, doing the video the other day about this, um, I went round it for about a minute and a half and did a quick video for Kijiji so that they could, you could have a look around it um, and I advertised it and five hours later it was sold. He got $850 for it. It doesn't seem a lot of money, but it was to him and that's the point. And, then, and the other thing was he had them given. So he hadn't actually bought them, he hasn't lost anything. So. And the sheet steel he got, which was like, like I say, like Baco foil, uh, he had that given as well. So he hasn't really lost anything. So really, at the end of the day, he's $900 in his pocket. And he, and he sort of needs that, rather than spending 
a fortune and borrowing money to get a car done. Mark's the sort of person who will convince me that it's a, you know, like a, a good idea to do this car and I'm saying, you, you, you're going to lose your shirt on it if you haven't lost it already. Um, just, just trying to find tyres? Incredible. So I don't know. I think it was a good move and when he actually got the money in his hand he was, he was kind of happy. So I think all's worked out in, well in the end. But just like I say, be, war, be wary of cars that you think is a nice project because sometimes if you calculate how much money you, you're going to spend on restoring it you might sort of think well I might as well just go and buy one you know it's in a pretty good state or something like that I used to love buying unfinished projects when I was in England I just buy unfinished projects Never, because it didn't matter to me because they were coming over here to Canada I didn't need to register them get them through MOT I just wanted the parts but I think Mark's uh, I think he was in a better frame of mind now so and like I say it's gone now right that's that see ya Thank you.